Hey kids, when Jesus was on earth, he often spoke to people in parables. Now we were taught that a parable was an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So the disciples asked Jesus one day why he spoke to them in parables. And Jesus said, to you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. The Bible is full of symbolisms. And in these symbolisms are mysteries that are not in the regular teaching of Christ. So by studying the symbolisms of the Bible, you can learn deeper truth and protect yourselves from being led astray into false teachings. One of the biggest and the most important symbols in the Bible is the tabernacle. This is a symbolism known as a type which is a real object, the tabernacle, used as a symbol of another real object, Jesus Christ. Now the tabernacle was built by the children of Israel under God's direction to be a place where God could dwell among his people. It was set up in the very center of the camp as they traveled from Mount Sinai to the Promised Land. And it symbolized that the proper place and the only place for Jesus Christ in the life of the Christian believer is at the center of the life. Now every aspect of the tabernacle is a picture of Jesus Christ. The foundation of the tabernacle shows Jesus as the only way to God. The structure shows Christ in his person while the coverings over the tabernacle show his character. The furniture shows Christ in his ministry, and the priesthood shows Christ in his intercession. The sacrifices show Jesus in his redemption, and the elements show Christ in his righteousness. The colors show Christ in his manhood, and the bars show Christ in his unity. So let's look at these symbols. First, the five elements of the tabernacle show the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Gold is a symbol of Jesus' divine righteousness as God. It was used to cover the boards, pillars, inside furniture, and was woven into the veil. Gold is a soft material, it's flexible, and it shows that God in his love is merciful. The purity of the gold spoke of his righteousness in all that he does. Everywhere inside we see gold. God is completely righteous in what he is, in what he does, and in what he speaks. Now silver is a symbol of Christ's atoning righteousness. Silver in the tabernacle came from the people in a contribution and everyone paid the same. Just as salvation is the same for everyone. The rich could not pay more, and the poor could not pay less. It was used as a foundation for the tabernacle to stand on, and it tied the tabernacle together. As God says in 1 Corinthians 3.10, Other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now brass was a symbol of God's judicial righteousness. Brass is the most inflexible metal, and it is a symbol of the law that is totally ungiving. If you break the law, you must pay the penalty, death. Jesus is the only one who could stand before God as perfect, so he alone met the judicial righteousness of God. Now, the wood in the tabernacle was a symbol of the human righteousness of Jesus Christ. Acacia wood was overlaid with gold, and it represented humanity as a tree is cut down, cleaned, and covered with the righteousness of God. Acacia wood was used in boards, furniture inside and out, because it is resistant to rotting, and so a symbol of Jesus' human righteousness, Jesus lived a perfect life without sin. The foundation of the tabernacle shows Christ as the only way to God. The entire tabernacle was designed by God to stand on only two elements, silver and brass. 
man must either stand before God in judgment on the basis of keeping the law, brass, or on the basis of the atonement of Jesus Christ, silver. Now the structure of the tabernacle showed the person of Christ. It was to be constructed just exactly as God had commanded on the mountain to the last detail. There was no place in the tabernacle for culture. That would be to conform God to man's liking. There was no place in the tabernacle for tradition. That would be man following man. There was no place for man's ideas. The way that seems right unto man is the way of death. And there was no place for cost effectiveness because that would rob God of his glory. The bars of the tabernacle showed the unity in Christ that we have, held together by five bars on each side. The first bar was the Bible. We all have the same rules. The second bar is we all have the same intercession, prayer. The third bar, we all have the same Holy Spirit. The fourth bar, we all have the same forgiveness, the blood of Jesus Christ. And the fifth bar, we all have the same fellowship, forgiveness of one another. The colors in the tabernacle showed the manhood of God, that Christ was fully man. The blue showed him as the heavenly man, the red as the suffering man, white as the spotless man, and purple as the royal man. Since purple is a combination of blue and red, his royalty came through his sufferings. The furniture of the tabernacle shows Christ in his ministry. The Ark of the Covenant was built of acacia wood and covered over with pure gold and was a symbol of Jesus as the protector of the law of God. An Ark is for protection. So in the Ark, the law of God was placed to maintain God's justice. The mercy seat was made of pure gold and covered by the cherubim who were the protectors of God's holiness. They were the mightiest of God's angels who surround the throne of God and cry out, Holy, Holy, Holy for all eternity. It is only God's mercy that can save us and God's love starts with God's mercy on sinful man. It is seen in the softness of the metal, the gold, where God remains righteous but has compassion on us. It is on the mercy seat that the blood is sprinkled by the high priest once a year to make atonement for sin. The golden altar of incense in front of the Ark of the Covenant is a place of intercession, a place of prayer. The smoke rising up to God is Christ our high priest's intercession for us to the Father. We see Jesus' great love in intercession for us. He pleads to the Father to forgive us when we sin. At the golden altar, God sees his Son and says, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. The inner veil shows the new covenant hung on the four pillars of the gospel and presenting Jesus taking on human flesh. He left his throne and became man as a newborn baby and lived a life and suffered in all things just as we have. The golden lampstand was made of pure gold, God's divine righteousness. It was of hammered work, speaking of his sufferings. He came as the light of the world to bring the light of the gospel that we might be saved. <laughs> the table of showbread sat on the north side of the tabernacle, and it held twelve loaves of bread, for Jesus feeds us daily on his truth. Jesus becomes the bread that came down out of heaven. The outer veil is a picture of Jesus as the giver of the Old Covenant, hung on the five pillars of the Law of Moses. There were also coverings that were over the tabernacle, and they show the character of Jesus Christ. The first covering speaks of his incarnation. It was made of ten linen curtains 
two sets of five, and they were all one measure, as all of Christ's attributes are of equal importance. God's love alone cannot bring man to redemption without his justice. Fine twisted linen spoke of his purity and righteousness, the spotless man. The second covering was made of goat skin, so it covered the tabernacle with roughness since the gospel is not popular. Jesus and his church today are looked at by skepticism by the world. This covering speaks of separation and atonement. The third covering was of ram skin dyed red. The ram was a picture of vigor and strength, and so we see the intense devotion of Christ to accomplish redemption in his consecration to death. His unreserved devotion to the Father to do his will unto death became his face set like a flint. The fourth covering was badger or porpoise skin. It was to withstand the elements of the desert. Christ stood firmly against evil, man and Satan. There is no outward beauty either of Christ or the church that would appeal to the world and we need to be careful not to create a beauty that should not be there. In the laver, we see his love as he brings to us the water of life for cleansing. The brazen altar shows Christ in his greatest expression of love as he gives his life for us. It is a picture of the cross where he was crucified and died for our sins. Fire in the Bible is a symbol of judgment, and here we see God's judgment on sin in the fire. We see Jesus' suffering and his death. We see his blood shed for us, and it becomes a basis for our forgiveness of sins. The smoke that ascends to heaven is a sweet-smelling savor to God, as it becomes a basis for his acceptance of the sinner. Around the tabernacle was the courtyard. Sin and sinful man cannot come into the presence of a holy God. Therefore, they remain outside the courtyard in their tribes because in the courtyard, sin is confronted with the justice of God and the wages of sin must be paid by death. So the sinner must bring an offering that is to be put to death. He brings a lamb. It is a symbol of the Lamb of God, Jesus. It is killed by the priest and placed on the brazen altar, a picture of the law which brings death and God's justice is met. Jesus, our high priest, must now carry the blood of the Lamb to travel through the rest of the tabernacle to the mercy seat. The priesthood presents Jesus Christ as our great intercessor and a mediator between God and man. The sacrifices present Christ as our Redeemer. There were four offerings that deal with the sins of man. The sin offering would deal with man the sinner, while the trespass offering would deal with the sins of man. The peace or thank offering deals with our relationship with our God. It's a free will offering. And the burnt offering is a picture of Jesus presenting himself as a pleasing offering to the Father. Now let's take the journey that Christ took in the tabernacle from the throne of glory to the cross and his victorious return. Every step from the mercy seat to the brazen altar demonstrated the love of God as Christ became the perfect sacrifice to take away our sins. God's love for us begins at the mercy seat where he is enthroned in glory, his holiness protected under the power of the mightiest of angels, the cherubim. Jesus, as the Ark of the Covenant, protects within himself the unbroken law of God. He who knew no sin was the only hope for fallen man to be reconciled to a holy God. Jesus, in his love, takes upon himself the veil of human flesh to redeem sinful man and is born as a baby in Bethlehem.
He becomes our mediator to reconcile sinful man to a holy God through the presentation of himself as a free will offering to God. Jesus, in his love, becomes the bread of heaven sent down to provide for those who hunger and thirst for righteousness so that they may never hunger again. Jesus, the light of the world, comes down to bring the message of eternal life through faith. The light dispels darkness and opens our spiritual eyes to see and understand. Jesus is veiled in all righteousness, having kept the law perfectly. Jesus is the water of life to cleanse the sinful soul by fulfilling the law and living a sinless life. Jesus' greatest demonstration of his love is seen at the brazen altar, the cross, where he lays down his life to pay the debt for sin. Jesus, the Lamb of God, takes the sins of the sinner upon himself and presents himself to the Father as the satisfaction for sin. Jesus, our high priest, takes the Lamb of God and sacrifices his life for our sin. The shed blood of Jesus Christ, the perfect lamb, is the only thing that can meet the demands of a holy God for justice. Jesus, through his own blood, is able to cleanse us from all sin and present us holy before God. Jesus, through his blood, is able to impart to us eternal light, which is the life of God in us. Jesus, through his blood, is able to indwell within us, and we become one flesh with him, sons of God. Jesus intercedes on our behalf through his own blood and purchases our redemption. Through the death of Jesus, the veil is torn apart, and we can enter into the presence of God. Jesus, through his perfect life, has kept the law unbroken and opened the way for man. As the blood of Jesus is applied to the mercy seat, we become accepted in the Beloved by God. Now every step from the brazen altar to the mercy seat was sprinkled with blood as Christ presents us perfect in his righteousness to the Father for salvation. Well, kids, the symbolisms of the Bible are not always easy to understand. But start early studying the Word of God with prayer and patience, and God, through His Holy Spirit, will open your eyes and give you understanding.